take a look at the state of these plants. It's so embarrassing. I'm absolutely heartbroken. G'day everybody, it's Danny here from Botani Danny. And in this video, I've got something absolutely shocking to share with you. Something that I'm so incredibly embarrassed about and I'm gonna do everything in my power to be able to change things. And it is trying to rebound and regrow these two very sad looking pot plants. Let's get started. So just to give you a little bit of background information, alongside this fence outside my house, um, I've got this beautiful kitchen bay window which is made of glass, which I look out and I think, you know what? I don't really want to see this really boring brown metal fence. So a couple of years ago, I decided to build like a cool little plant wall. Put some pots in there, have some trailing plants, so that when I'm doing my cooking, I can look out the kitchen window and see the plants outside. Now over time, a lot of those plants have really struggled to survive and it's been probably months or years since I've actually revisited that plant wall and really tried to look after it, but it's never too late. All right, all right, this looks pretty bad. How could I have let this just go so out of control? I don't know, this whole area outside the side of my house is probably not an area that I tend to go to very often. I tend to turn away when I see weeds going through and back in the day when I would usually get on my hands and knees and pull the weeds out. And I've let the plants kind of do what they like in this area and I think this is where I feel really guilty about not looking after this area because this area could have been such an amazing space. Oh my goodness, just look how many weeds are here. Wow, look at this peperomia. The position of this particular plant was so bad that it couldn't get enough light from its base pot that it stretched down to the pot below it and planted some new roots in the plot beneath it in order to actually just survive. Even the weed growth has kind of just really taken over this area, as you can see. This pot literally has two different species of plants growing within it, as well as this moss that's kind of accumulated on top. I guess the most fascinating thing about seeing this is how adaptive and how resilient some plants are to surviving in the most harshest environments. Somehow the spores of a fern has managed to implant itself into this pot and it's actually grown. I'm gonna rescue this fern and put it in my pond. It really is quite a jungle in there. Oh my goodness. So let's examine this trail of destruction. I am very embarrassed about how these two pots have been sitting on my pot plant wall for so long and how they've unfortunately not had a good run. But I think I might have just been able to rescue them in time to do something about it. So the first pot we might look at is this one that contains this Silver Falls plant. This, um, I think it's Dichondrus argentinus. Uh, basically, it's a plant that grows in uh, Southern America, um, New Mexico, where it prefers part shade. People often uh, use it as a trailing plant to provide contrast in their gardens. It grows relatively easily, but um, in the spot that I've actually tried to grow it in, uh, there's a bit of drip coming from the pot, it's dripping on my knee in fact, um, it's really struggled to survive. I mean the ones right here at the base of the pot have kind of uh, grown alright, but just even all the dry threads that are coming out from this... <laughs> oh my lord. It's got a combination of moss growing in the middle, I've got these silver falls kind of coming out the edge, but this thing, this peperomia, is just really trying its best to survive. It's realized it probably hasn't been able to survive in this particular pot, but as I showed you in a shot earlier, it's actually tried to propagate itself into the other surrounding pots. So it's trailed down, and because you can kind of break 
uh, these peperomias off and then actually plant them and create new plants, it actually started rooting itself in an adjacent pot. I do like this variegated variety, especially these beautiful heart-shaped leaves because once it's actually growing properly, this is gonna look so beautifully on my wall garden. First thing I wanna do is clean these poor plants up. Get rid of these eucalyptus leaves that have dropped from my beautiful gum tree in my backyard. And using my leaf cutters, because this is such a large and long trailing plant, I'm gonna make sure that I cut the right threads. And it's almost like giving the plant a bit of a haircut. So I've gotta pick all the dry bits. Ooh, look, this little spider plant is saying hello. Oh, it's even got like a little uh, moon crescent shaped. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this plant out of its pot and then put some fresh potting mix. I'm going to put a mixture of both the original soil and some new soil. This is the most exciting part is to see. This is going to give us a big indication of plant health and whether it's sustaining itself. Ooh. If you look at the roots here, they're all streaming down, so they're obviously uh, quite fine. And I can see just by inspecting those roots, the soil quality actually seems to be pretty good. Thick roots that kind of filter and become thinner and thinner and thinner and more diverse. So I guess just for my observation, it looks like that the plant is actually quite healthy. It's got a really good root network, it's got a um, really thick base to it, and it seems like the roots have kind of fingered and branched their way down really deep into the soil. It just, I think, seems like that maybe there's not enough light, it probably needs a little bit more light, and the position that I've kept this plant in is probably not really the most ideal spot for it. So Look at how long this plant is. This silver fall plant really definitely lives up to its name of these silvery leaves looking like water cascading from the top of a mountain. Maybe here, maybe over here. This next one is going to be the trickiest one of all, mainly because it's got two plants growing in one. The other thing that I've really noticed upon closer inspection is that the tubes coming from this peperomia is actually really transparent. There doesn't seem to be a lot of chlorophyll in them, so it looks like it's really tried to... And this is usually a sign of the fact that it's probably too dark. So I'm gonna first of all do a little bit of cleaning up. I'm gonna just see if these branching bits are actually worth keeping. Sometimes it's good to prune off anything that just does not look like it's going to head anywhere. Now I hope it does well. I'm actually really nervous about this one just because of how skeletal and pale it looks. So So it's day seven and it's time to check in on our Silver Falls plant and our Peperomia. They're looking very thin, still very delicate and fragile. I'm just going to be really careful with these Silver Falls threads as I don't want to break them or detach them from the base of the plant because that's where a lot of the water and the nutrients are being transported to the periphery. It does look like the leaves are perking up a little bit better. Look at this. So whilst there's no new sprouts, I know that the roots are still deep within this pot. I've been watering it daily, and this particular part of the nursery does get a lot of cool light. Come now this peperomia <laughs> looks quite sad. It's very skeletal, but I think these two new leaves here is what's going to keep me hanging on and giving me 
the inspiration to continue nurturing and tendering to this plant. I'm also quite confident that these greener leaves down near the end of the peperomia are actually going to help sustain and sprout new leaf growth further up the chain and I am fingers crossed going to hope that this is going to turn out better in the next seven days. I trail down this spider-like structure, it's still quite light in colour, so there's not much chlorophyll in the stem of this peperomia. But as I get further down, it does get more and more green, but if we inspect it a little bit closer, these leaves down here are actually really healthy. Oh, my heart! These leaves here are actually quite large. So I guess a week after I've repotted them, put them in new locations, I think what I'm really looking for is a denser coloration of the leaves in terms of being a little bit more green, a strengthening of the actual trail itself and a thickening of the trail. This one seems to be doing okay, although there are a couple of threads that don't look like they're going to survive, which I might pull off later on. This one seems to be densing up, but it's still early days. It's I've just decided to reposition them slightly so that the peperomia leaves are more facing towards the sunlight and same with the silver falls just so i think they get more of that filtered light i think it's been about two months since i've tried to restore these plants and to be honest it's actually been a very very slow progress i initially had these plants around the corner where my nursery was and they just didn't really seem to grow but here's a little bit of an update. I've moved them to this kind of sunny sheltered area as you can see above, and we're gonna see if they've gotten any better. Plant number one. It's dangling pretty well. This is where it starts looking a little bit skeletal. Still looking very skeletal, but we have progress. We've moved from having a one leaf to now four leaves. Plant rescue number two. So I've been watering this daily. I think it's liking the full sun. Uh, some of the leaves are starting to look a little bit more springy, especially when you touch them. And it's becoming a lot more denser near the top here. So I think it just might survive. All right, so it's been a really long time since I've checked in. Um, but yeah, it's time to see how my Peperomia and Silver Falls are actually doing. So there's some good news and some bad news. Let's start with the bad news. So I'm really sad to say that the Peperomia is not doing so well. I had it in the full sun. I think I might have been overwatering it. And this is probably eight months down the track. And this is now what it looks like. It's in its, like, fourth home in this, like, shaded area. Uh, don't look at that side. Um, I'm hoping that the new position is going to allow it to thrive a bit more. But, uh, yeah, not doing so well, this, this plant. So this Peperomia has been in this position for a long time. Uh, I've noticed that further down, some of the leaves have kind of whitened and dropped off but if you get closer to the actual base of this plant you'll see that new leaves have started to form from the central part and they're now going to start i guess cascading down i guess what i can do now is to start trimming off these end bits to kind of promote this cool cascading effect i've even grown some other moss and other plants in it so there you have it folks eight months down the track that's how those two plants are doing um ooh, one more thing before i go i've got to show you an update on the plant wall area oh. and this is what it looks like now oh my goodness okay this is a big project I guess it's going to be a work in progress.